Hello and welcome back to the Try Hard Workshop. This week we're once again pushing our limits and doing a mega build. That means a whole battle board in two videos with as many interesting terrain dynamics as we can fit in. If you've seen the last few videos, we're taking all that sweet knowledge and iterating it into a battlefield. This week you'll be hearing the sweet dulcet tones of Master Builder Q as he builds billets to house all your soldiers. Next he'll be building a power plant and from what I've seen of it mid-construction, it is truly epic. In addition to all this, to stimulate your sci-fi adult cerebrums, our scriptwriter has done a deep dive into the development of sci-fi scenery. And of course, we're going to be talking about 40k. If there's any part of today's build you want explained in more depth, all this stuff is in the last two videos. If you want to keep up with the channel, fire us a subscription. We're a growing channel and every single sub is important to us. And a big thank you to everyone who's subbed so far. Okay, let's get stuck in. Let's be honest, 40k is so dominant in the hobby that it sort of defines what we take for granted. Take its particular brand of grimdark with pipes going into skulls, cherubs half made of metal, and legions of priests swinging incense as they march toward the Eternity Gate. It's epic stuff, and of course, uniquely 40k. But if you look back, you're going to find a rich history of science fiction which ultimately inspired the setting, and by extension inspires us to build sci-fi terrain for our own game boards. So let's look back at a few of those early influences and why they're still important today. We have to begin with 2000 AD, the British comic anthology that launched Judge Dredd, which gave us the Arbides and the suffocating depth of Hive Cities. It had the Rogue Trooper strip, about a super soldier whose regiments were betrayed at the drop site massacre, and then goes on to hunt the traitor general who did it. This story was ported from Rogue Trooper to Rogue Traitor, and served as the seed for 40k's narrative. Next we have some core concepts coming from cinema. First is Industrial Light and Magic's work on 1977 Star Wars. They pioneered the greebling technique which we've talked about at length in our last video. But for 40k, it was this greebling concept that gave rise to the hyperdynamic, multi-layered degradation of hive worlds. Think about any terrain from Necromunda and you're essentially there. Of course Star Wars is much brighter than 40k, so where did that darkness come from? Well, it was Ridley Scott's Alien. It had two distinct artistic directions, one for the humans, which was imagined by Mobius, himself a godfather of modern sci-fi, through French comic Metal Hurlant, or Heavy Metal, but it was the other art director that's important for today, H.R. Geiger. His lurid mechanical art style gave rise to the really visceral, invasive feeling elements of modern grimdark. Think about bodies half entombed in tangles of wires, eternally trapped to serve some imperial machine. And whilst on the topic of all these incredible names, we have to talk about Dan O'Bannon and Hodorowsky's failed adaptations of Dune. We can only imagine the Griebling that never was. Alright, so we've established 2000 AD, Star Wars and Alien as a really solid starting point. But there's so much going on throughout the 80s and 90s, like the Neo-Tokyo styling of LA and Blade Runner, or the art of Drie bringing the grimdark into full psychedelia. Not to mention the stark apocalypse of Terminator 2's skull crushing moment, or the high octane wastelands of the Mad Max series. Really I think the important bit with Mad Max is, you know, the shirtless sax man who you know, plays in Tina Turner's band. He's the real star, and he's what really makes 
you know, an apocalypse. That's why he turns up in Lost Boys. He's the real hero. But something else happened, outside of culture. Reality was speeding up. The internet, modern space exploration, 3D printed mass industry, drone warfare. Suddenly the future didn't seem so far away, and science fiction scenery became hyper realistic, and more than a little relatable. Not only that, we amateur modellers had more time, and near infinite YouTube resources, to build bigger and better. Just to wrap up our point on inspirations, let's talk about where we're from. Like Blade Runner's LA was picturing the city in the 1980s and projecting it into a dark future, we've done the same. If you look at these billets and the corrugated rust on the walls, they're roughly based on the now defunct British military bases in West Belfast. Since the peace process, they've gone to rust and serve as great inspiration for a dark future. Look around your own city and see what you can take inspiration from. If you're from a post-industrial town in England, think about all those abandoned factories. If you're from the Cascadian forests of Washington, what signs of civilization will still be around long after humanity is gone? So let's bring this back to terrain building. 40k is a lot of our inspiration, but realistically, science fiction is limitless. So have a good think about what inspires you. What are your favorite settings? Which parts of your hometown speak to you or unnerve you? Project it into the far future. Then think about the rules of the game that you're playing. Think about movement dynamics, lines of sight, choke points, and then cover it all in greebling. And before you know it, you'll have yourself a battlefield. Alright guys, that's everything from us this week. We've got the foundations of our compound, and next week we're building that power plant and constructing everything, then bringing the war to the workshop. Cheers for tuning in, and if you enjoyed, hit us with a sub, and until next time, try hard.
No. Because when you do the transition, you'll see the flesh come up as, like a, as, a, as an echo. Oh, uh, 